Well, today is the day. What you see now and over the course of the next few days is Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer. The alpha build that myself and other creators and press were invited to play last week in order to prep for today's big reveal. While we'll have a ton of stuff to discuss in today's later videos, I want to break down first and foremost a few dozen things that you need to know about Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer and stuff that you likely may have missed from just seeing gameplay in raw formats. If you'd like to learn about something in particular, if you have any questions, do be sure to let me know in the comments down below because we can look to make some videos out of that and answer any communal questions you have, but also do be sure to let me know your thoughts on what you see here in front of you. You're looking forward to it. Anything in particular that gets you really excited here with this, whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. As well, if you are new to the channel, perhaps part of that 62% of viewers not subscribed, do be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all things Black Ops Cold War multiplayer, as we have a ton of stuff to come that you won't want to miss. But anyways, we got a lot to talk about, so sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Firstly, let's start out with the gameplay. Let's start out at a top-down level here with this. One of the big things that I want to talk about is that of create a class returning with a somewhat twist. This is the modern warfare system, but with elements of, say, pick 10 returning. You have your base guarantees, a primary, a secondary, lethal, tactical, field upgrade, perks, and a wild card. To build on a weapon, you have, like modern warfare system, five attachments available across the categories of optic, muzzle, barrel, underbarrel, body, stock, magazine, and handle. These categories are, again, exactly like they are in the gunsmith for modern warfare, which which actually, if you take a look at it, Gunsmith actually is returning where you have all those different subcategories, but also multiple attachments that you end up having for each of those with seemingly just as much weapon depth and customization as you had in Modern Warfare system. It's so similar that even the statistical drawbacks and even benefits are still seen for each attachment and present as well on that HUD. New to Black Ops Cold War though, is the ability to take an attachment in every single slot without having to sacrifice your secondary perks, lethal, or tacticals. A wild card called Gunfighter exists now that will allow you to take eight attachments. Coincidentally, the exact amount of categories there are for weapon modifications. So you will have the option to equip an optic muzzle, barrel, underbarrel, stock, body, magazine, and handle, all without having to sacrifice any secondary, any perk, anything like that. So we'll come back to some other wild cards later on here in this video, but that's something that's definitely new here with this, or at least a sort of twist on what we have already. The weapons on offer we have are actually a decent bit here for the Alpha. We have rifles, SMGs, tactical rifles, LMGs, snipers, pistols, shotguns, and launchers. For the rifles, we have the XM4, the Krig 6, and the AK-47. The SMGs, the MP5, Type 821, and the AK-74U. The tactical rifles include the M16 and the Type 63, the LMGs, the RPD and the Stoner 63, the snipers, the LW3 Tundra and the Pellington 703, the pistols of the 1911 and the Diamati, the shotguns of the Hauer 77 and the Gallo SA-12, and the final launcher then of the Sigma-2. Now, quickly before I jump into anything else here, sniping is ridiculously good and honestly incredibly fun within this game. SMGs are also kind of crazy. The AK-74U is, in my mind, without a doubt, the best gun in the game. The MP5 and the Type 821 are also close behind that. Perks, you got a bunch of stuff on offer here, again, in your Perk 1, 2, and 3 category. In Perk 1, you have Engineer, which detects enemy equipment and score streaks through walls and sees enemy streaks on your minimap with the ability to reroll care packages. Tack Mask allows you to maximize resistance to flashbangs and stun grenades, but also makes you immune to gas. Flak Jacket allows you to take less damage from enemy explosives and Molotov fires. In the Perk 2 category, we have Scavenger, which allows you to replenish ammo from fallen players. Quartermaster, which allows you to recharge equipment over 25 seconds and get more, as well as Tracker, which allows you to see an imprint of the enemy's footsteps, as well as the ability to aim at enemies to reveal them on your team's minimap. Perk 3 includes Cold Blooded, which allows AI controlled streaks to overlook you and allows you to become immune to player controlled streaks that normally would highlight you. It also allows you to show up as cold on thermal and players in vehicles won't be able to see your nameplate. Ghost allows you to be undetectable to enemy spy planes whenever moving, which thank god there's now that differentiation in this game again as opposed to where it was not in Modern Warfare. As well, it allows planting, diffusing, or controlling score streaks to be undetectable by enemy spy planes as well. And finally, we have Ninja, which allows you to sprint more quietly and make you resistant to the field mic field upgrade. Now, the first other piece of information you may not know about here is that Ninja is not Dead Silence. There was a couple of rumors. Firstly, that Dead Silence wasn't going to be in the game. Then it was rumored that it was going to be, but right now it doesn't seem to be in the same capacity that we recall Dead Silence being in the past. It's kind of there, but it's not. Ninja simply lowers that sprint audio, so do with that what you will. I'm not a huge fan of it missing right now. I mean, who knows, maybe it comes in the full build, but I don't see why you'd miss out on the chance to sort of 
set the record straight where no dead silence in modern warfare was something a lot of people did not agree with now perks are also not limited to just one two and three with wild cards you can change your perk play with perk greed you can take three additional perks so that you have six perks total on top of again your primary secondary and everything else in your loadout with the wild card lawbreaker you also can take any perks in any slots meaning you could take say three perk threes one of perk two two of perk three and maybe say all perk ones however you want just adding up to those three perks this wild card also would allow you to have overkill or underkill by the way lawbreaker lets you take two primaries or two secondaries since you can take any weapon in those two weapon slots for the lethals and tacticals you have c4 and frag as well as smoke and stun and then field upgrades you also have proximity mines sam turrets jammers and field mics and just like the field upgrades in modern warfare those are progressive over time one awesome thing that is returning here is the ability to edit your loadouts on the fly instead of having an edit button though next to the class whenever you open up your menu that's something you need to hold triangle or y on consoles or whatever you have it bound to on pc that was something that i was looking for at the very beginning and i was really hoping to see return but i didn't see it until about halfway through our capture session so it was a life changer once i did see it and honestly was something that i was really relieved to finally see but i just think that's a nice carrying forward feature of a quality of life issue with modern warfare that was awesome to see Let's talk about score streaks next here, though, real quickly. Firstly, we have a couple of score streaks on offer from this alpha build. The RCXD for 600 score, the Spy Plane for 800 score, the Artillery for 1900, the Napalm Strike for 2400, the Air Patrol, which attacks enemy air streaks, kind of like an EMP in a sense, where it just takes out everything in the air. That's available for 2750 score. Well, the War Machine is available for 3150. The Attack Helicopter, which is AI based, is for 3750. And the Chopper Gunner, controlled by the player like the Huey from Black Ops 1, is available for 6000 score. Now, score streaks in this game actually work fundamentally different. It's a brand new system, or kind of like a hybrid system, which is kind of weird this year, not gonna lie. Of course, we'll get used to this even once the beta passes, let alone this time next year, but at first, First, it's a weird introduction here. It's a combination of a few different systems we've seen before. Firstly, the score streak system. Second, requisitions in a sense. And three, an entirely new system. So here's how it works. Streaks are earned by your overall score, like your literal overall score on your leaderboard. You'll see that the helo is say again, 6,000 score, but that's based upon your literal score in the match. Meaning that so long as you get 6,000 score in a match, which on this build, the people we were playing with and against was kind of tough, not gonna lie. You're gonna get it at least once though if you hit 6,000 score and that's kind of where that requisition comes into play you're guaranteed a streak at one point or another whether it be low or high so long as you hit that base level here but where it's similar to the old system is that you can in fact lap your streaks so UAVs or spy planes you'll get multiple of those before you end up getting that chopper gunner so it's nice to see the ability to earn multiple streaks in a life once again here at this but where it differs and tries to bridge that gap is then streaking is actually huge in this game for score streaks yes you're guaranteed streaks but the bigger streak you go on the more score you'll end up getting with each kill that seemingly progresses that streak totally honest with you playing against the likes of skump priesta other pros and then other great players like dismo testy swag and the likes i wasn't really exactly streaking out but on the short little runs that i had on say miami i had a bonus of 50 score on top of a 50 score for a kill up until that third kill which means at one and two kills i got 100 score per kill but then at three i ended up getting 50 plus a 150 bonus meaning 200 in total then at five kills i had 50 score for that kill plus a 450 score bonus meaning 500 total and so on and so forth you'll see that that compounds more and more meaning the longer streak you go on the more streak you'll end up getting and it adds up insanely quick right now i'm kind of up in the air on how i feel about this i'm not entirely sure just yet i kind of like it but i also kind of don't i'm not a fan of those handouts but i kind of understand why they're there partially but we'll see if this grows on me or not but that is how that works out also there are cooldowns on streaks in case you say start streaking really hard as for your hud in game the minimap and the compass both return here with this a combination of modern warfare system and also the traditional system in place shots show up on the minimap if they're in the vicinity they'll show up as regular dots on that minimap but if they're not they'll still show up but in the outer ring letting you know the general direction in which those shots came from the minimap also shows a little bit more area than that of the modern warfare minimap 
As for health regeneration, that's auto. Right now, I don't think that we saw any specifics in terms of the overall damage and total health. There is a bar on your HUD that showcases your health, but not in a total number listed like in Black Ops 4. Instead, it's kind of just a short percentage and a quick at glance of, okay, I have about 50% health left. I should probably duck and take some cover. Additionally, there was nothing like stim available at all as any sort of tactical. Maybe that comes later on in a larger build, but from what we had here on offer, it was all auto health regeneration. Additionally, adding on top of that, talking a little bit about health, you also are able to see how much health the enemy you're going up against has as well. When you ADS, it will be above their nameplate with that health bar. So that's something cool that was added in here with this. The time to kill felt like kind of a middle ground between Modern Warfare and Black Ops 4, which I'm totally fine with. Black Ops 4 kind of took a while to get kills, if you ask me, but Modern Warfare MP was incredibly unforgiving in how fast it was. You couldn't take a shot or two and still win a gunfight. If you didn't shoot first, you're likely dead. Audio also rounding out some general stuff about gameplay here is that it sounded good. That was something that's a big complaint here about Modern Warfare is that footstep audio in particular is oftentimes not as loud as it should be. Oftentimes doesn't seem as accurate. But so far in the alpha that we played, the couple of hours I had of hands-on time, footstep audio was clear, discernible, and something that I could actually decipher where players were coming from and then set myself up for a gunfight because of that. Of course, those things like the ninja perk do make it a little bit harder to hear those, but it is something that if you don't have ninja, you're gonna be stomp, stomp, stomping around. And that gives your position away big time. Let's talk a little bit about the modes next here up on deck because we have a handful of those that you'll see not only in gameplay from here on the channel, also some of the streams going on right now, but then also in other footage you'll see around. We had Domination, TDM, Kill Confirmed, Hardpoint, Control, VIP, and a mode called Combined Arms. Now, Domination is your standard. That's your 200 score limit, half time at 100 score. Team Deathmatch is Kill or Be Killed, 75 kill limit. Kill confirmed, capture the tags, 80 tags to win. Gameplay is the same as previous games. Hardpoint, again, same as previous games. 250 score limit here with that one. Control the hardpoint and end up winning. Control returns from Black Ops 4, which I'm a big fan of. Same rules, same format, just ported over. Love that mode back then. Happy to see it return. VIP is the first of the new modes that you'll end up seeing here in this gameplay, in which this is a mix of search and destroy with a sort of VIP protect that important player type of mode here with that, where you have to protect the VIP at all costs. Now, you have your traditional loadouts, everything else like that, but the VIP is outfitted with only a pistol and a UAV. Now, you and your team, if you are on the VIP side, you have to escort the VIP to the extract location and hold out there. If you eliminate the enemies or extract the VIP, you win the round. If you end up losing all your members on your team, or if you lose the VIP at any time, they could even die first, you'll lose the round. So that's something that you have to really play kind of objectively here with that, protect that player, but it's the first of four rounds wins. Now, a little side note here with this one, a footnote perhaps, this is what leaked last week and that was seen everywhere. I saw a bunch of people talking about this in which it was something they really didn't like the look of it, and I'll be totally honest with you, no one else really did either. To me, this was not an accurate representation of the full game, or at least the full build that we played here with this. Again, coming back to it, talking with other creators, talking with other people that play this, I don't think that really anybody really was a huge fan on this. It was maybe a cool kind of party mode, but not a full flagship mode that you'd want to see shown off right out of the gate, because again, it's not an accurate depiction of the full on game. A lot of the maps too, wasn't too big a fan here of that one. Miami, it really wasn't bad, but still wasn't entirely great. Then we ended up seeing that we had combined arms, which is your ground war-esque gameplay. You have 24 players in 12v12 format on larger maps with vehicles, and again, those larger player counts. Modes like domination are available here in this one, and admittedly, some of these maps, I'm not a really big fan here for, for this. Some of these are too big for 12v12, if you ask me. Plus, in some of these domination modes, there's upwards of six flags for a lower player count than Modern Warfare's ground war, and on top of that, there is no flag or squad spawn options, so it just kind of puts you in the back of the map every single time and to me that's not entirely cool to run a big map run for a minute then get sniped start all the way back at that main spawn point spawns also in this i feel like could use some work there's plenty of times where i had to rappel across to the ship on armada and i just get sniped the moment i got across there because it's so easy to watch those locations and hell i'm pretty sure even on armada i had a clip where i watched someone spawn and i sniped them immediately as for operators we can jump over to that now there's currently 10 operators in play here at this those being adler baker 
Hector, Garcia, Sims, Portnova, Stone, Song, Vargas, Hunter, and Power. Now, Adler, Baker, Garcia, Sims, and Portnova all belong to specific factions, while the rest are labeled as Milsim. So, kind of confirming the factions like Modern Warfare, but also having default customization to come as well, perhaps maybe even challenge-based like Modern Warfare system. Also, the operators are only cosmetic. They're not like specialists in Black Ops 3 and 4, so don't worry about that one. Before we jump into some general notes here and some general discussion about some stuff you need to know, also, let's talk a little bit about settings, because there's some new and current returning settings here within Black Ops Cold War that are definitely worth knowing they're there. Per the alpha, the max sensitivity was 14 both horizontal and vertical, which to me is oddly specific. ADS stick sensitivity is also something that is returning here and has been in the last two titles, so that's nice to add that extra little bit of customization and precision. Driving is an interesting and unique feature that I didn't really realize until going back and looking through footage that it was the way that it was. At first, I thought I was like, oh, damn it, driving is tethered to the right thumbstick again, like in Blackout, which I wasn't a huge fan of back in the day. But there's aim-based, the Blackout system, and also alternate, which looks to be like the Modern Warfare and Warzone current system. Now, this adds in the option to choose which one you want to use here where you didn't have that beforehand. Motion Blur returns with the options of All, Self, or Off. So unlike Modern Warfare, it seems like based upon the alpha, there is no option to have it enabled on the world, but not on your gun. All includes on your gun and the world, Self includes your gun and your hands, and Off as well, Off. There's also an option to mute sound entirely, similar to how there's hotkeys on PC, like F10 to mute the All Game audio. There's now a tab on console to fully mute. That's everything along with your options for master, music, and all other volumes. There's also Activision accounts, of course, which will allow for cross-play, cross-progression, but you can also name yourself whatever you want here again in this year. As for general notes rounding out here of this video, let's talk about one big one that is huge, is that from this, while it wasn't accessible in this alpha build, it confirmed that it was going to be there, Theater mode is returning. So that's definitely huge for content creators for just having some fun, maybe messing around and checking out old gameplays, but that's gonna be something that returns as well. If you've wondered how Warzone would join the two together in terms of Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare, it seems like we have a lot more connection than just Warzone. The lobby UI and layout, while only an alpha and is still subject to change as time progresses, is nearly identical to Modern Warfare's, with rows above of lobby, loadout, operators, barracks, and the store, and the main menu is kind of the same, with campaign, multiplayer, Warzone, zombies, and the store in those sort of tiles on that main menu. Now, overall, I definitely would say that visibility in terms of long-range engagements could definitely be better, and I do hope that is something that's improved upon, even while bringing out a sniper with a sniper scope, I feel like at those extreme distances, I was still having a really tough time finding people and spotting players. So while it is something that lighting actually does feel better, which we'll talk about here in just a second, visibility as a whole, I feel like could be a little bit better. Modern Warfare to Black Ops Cold War is about to feel so weird because honestly, it's kind of clunky going back to it. I don't know if that's just me going from PC to PlayStation 4 with lower frame rate and a lower FOV, but also mixed in with that Black Ops movement, but it's going to be different and it might take some getting used to. And finally, again, that lighting, talking about that again, it does feel much better. I know that they touched on this within the pre-briefing before the reveal. We talked about this on the channel as a result of that, but it's nice that you can actually see stuff again here, and I'm hopeful that that carries over into things like, say, Warzone. Miami is naturally a darker map, so you might see some gameplay and think, well, that's hard to see, but that's set at night. But even that was still relatively visible. But overall, that is everything here that I can think of off the top of my head that you absolutely need to know about Black Ops Cold Wars multiplayer. Of course, I'm guaranteed to miss something. There is so much to talk about that there's no way that I'm not going to come back to this after a couple of hours of it's being uploaded and being like, dang it, totally forgot that. But for the time being, that's what we got here, and that's where we're going to wrap it up. So make sure you stick it here on the channel for, of course, more content going out today and tomorrow and the days to follow. Follow over on Twitch as well, because as this video going live, we'll be live streaming multiplayer for Black Ops Cold War over on our Twitch. So we're taking part in a little bit of an alpha reveal as well, so you can come and check that out live. But let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Want to stay up to date with all things Black Ops Cold War multiplayer. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. Those are the best places to get kind of thoughts out of YouTube practically live on both those but that said i will see you guys later for even more content thanks for sticking around it's been a longer video i'm excited here to share even more with you about black ops cold war hopefully you are as well and until the next one have a great rest of your day peace